Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. I'm Katie and today, even though I said I'd never get one ever again, we're trying Artful for the second time. So before I get into why the change of heart, let's talk about what I am unboxing right now. First of all, we had the booklet, which I am happy to say contained less adverts and a lot more useful content. The first art material I've pulled out is the Pelican Blue Black Ink, and that's a blue ink which contains oak gall, so it kind of gets a little bit darker as it dries. We have five bottles of acrylic ink and one bottle of black Indian ink as well. We also have four Artful brand blank greeting cards and envelopes and they are 280 GSM uncoated board suitable for wet and dry media. Also included is the Artful watercolour paper and that is 25 sheets of A4 at 330 GSM acid free premium heavyweight watercolour paper. So that's the inks, that's the surfaces, let's just get straight onto the things we apply it with. So we have two artful brushes and they're nylon and one is a size 6 round and the other is a size 8 flat. It's nice to have that variety actually. Also included are three artful brand watercolour brush pens and to be honest I was a little disappointed with one of them there was quite a lot of hair that was coming out and I'll be honest I don't use them in the video because they're not my favourite. I'd much rather use a traditional brush if I'm at home which is the case at the moment so the travel handiness of them isn't really applicable and I might as well use a better brush for the job and that's just my opinion it's a preference. We have a Unipin liner pen and that is in 0.3 millimeters in black ink a faber castell pencil in f and a clear wax crayon which is for a wax resist technique however it was a little bit crumbly and it kind of i wasn't even being heavy handed to be honest and it kind of snapped in half and it was very crummy on the page so let's talk about these inks. You have a lemon yellow, Prussian blue, scarlet, deep green and violet and that is for the acrylic based inks. And again the pelican blue black ink and yeah I must admit actually I really liked that and I liked how dual toned it was compared to how flat the acrylic inks were. However, the acrylic inks are quite different in my opinion to use them watercolours. I thought how they behaved with a wet and wet technique was quite bizarre, but I will go into that a little bit more whilst I'm painting with them. However, just enjoy that gorgeous flow on screen right now. As I was doing the swatches, I thought, yeah, this needs a close up. So you can kind of see how it behaves and the point I'm going to make about it in a bit. It's not a bad point though, don't worry. And the black Indian ink kind of just went down like black Indian ink, which is fine. I also forgot to mention we have a really odd little pencil. It's a China Graph pencil and you can use it on glass, acetate and other polished non-porous surfaces, which is really bizarre as to why it's in this box. So I kind of get why it's in there. It's obviously to add white to areas but I think a gel pen could have done that. It was very frustrating, it was a very brittle lead in there and again in one of the paintings I will talk about that a little bit more. So to give these inks a spin I thought I would do a number of pieces so sit back, relax, enjoy. The first one I'm doing on here is an owl and I wanted to use this really unusual blue black ink and just see what it was about. The layers were very apparent with this and it's hardly diluted what I'm putting down. It might be ever so slightly but with each layer you've got this gorgeous effect that comes from it and it's, it looks inconsistent but it's quite consistent to do if that makes sense. 
In other words, I guess because it's quite water soluble even once it's been laid down, with each coat of ink it's going to do something to the layers underneath and bring it back to life and you've just got this very nice effect. I wanted it to get a little bit darker so I paired it up with the India ink that came in the box and applied that again with these gorgeous brushes that came and gradually diluted it on the outskirts so it would just blend in but keep that really gorgeous texture I managed to achieve. And now it was time to start adding some details so that Unipin fine liner came in quite handy for that. I wanted the features to be quite delicate on there but still stand out and I don't think I'd be able to achieve that with any of the brushes because they were a bit on the big side. I'm not complaining but obviously this is why the inclusion of the pen was in there so those little details could be done. I used dots just to initially lay out where I'd want the plumage and I do go back in there a little later on to spruce it up a little bit. So why did I give this box a try after the first one I tried, which was their first box, really put me off. So I'd seen it advertised on Facebook and it said there was up to £90 worth of goods inside for the price of £35, which is how much the box costs per quarter. Now, for be honest with you, I'm not believing it's £90 worth of materials per se. It's a lot of their own brand stuff, so they can pretty much put whatever price they want on it and then they can say, well, it was this much and when you add it all up and where do we need to hit this bargain price? The inks, the acrylic inks are £6.50 each. I'll be honest with you, you can get De La Roni ones for a lot cheaper than that. But again, I'm not complaining. I'm perhaps just pointing this out where which is why I'm a little bit cautious we could say of artful. The watercolour paper was retailed at £19.95 and you can buy all of this off the website as well so they will charge you if you buy these individually. I think for 25 sheets of A4 paper at 330 GSM it doesn't say whether it's cotton based or not. I think that's really steep. The Honeymule paper I used, which is 425 GSM, you get 50 sheets per pack. And okay, it doesn't tell you what the paper's made out of, but I'm going to assume it's paper pulp, which is the same as this. And I think I paid a lot less. I think I paid about £17. I could be wrong, and you're quite welcome to check the price on Jackson's website. I'm pretty sure it's on there still. So yeah, things like that kind of, I don't know, they kind of irk me a little bit. It's like the artful brush pens for three of them, it's 5 95 I'll be honest with you, I've bought better quality ones off Wish or similar quality ones for a pound. However, I must admit I'm quite impressed with the paint brushes and they're retailed at £5.95 and £6.50 and to be honest, I would pay that for them. They are really nice brushes and after using them with acrylic based medium, I usually kind of think that's when paint brushes die with me. They haven't, they've washed really nicely and the tips have formed the same and everything's, everything's good. They also include the price of the magazine, which I think they say is about £7 on the website. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I, I think it's very odd how this is presented compared to other art subscription boxes. I mean, maybe it's quite niche. I don't know. But I digress a little bit. I don't think there's £90 worth of materials in there if we're comparing them to reputable and comparable goods. But for £35, I actually thought this was quite a good deal and I perhaps just wanted to give it a try again. And it's also been a long time since I've used acrylic inks. I tend to use them in a spray bottle on larger surfaces, so it was actually quite nice to have a dedicated set to work on papers with. Now, speaking of paper, I am painting this picture on the artful paper and not the cards anymore I decided to cut them in half and do smaller pieces just because it would fit on the camera better and it also just meant I wasn't using this very expensive watercolour paper up quicker than I needed to 
I also used the wax crayon and yeah to be fair to it it does do a good resist but it's very difficult to get any defined edges down and the actual wax crayon itself it, it was just so crumbly and messy and I probably reckon you could use a Crayola for that and it would be fine but that was retailed at 60p so it's neither here nor there to be honest Again, I love how the colours layered here. I chose not to use the Pelican ink on this one and just strictly keep it to the acrylic inks and the Indian ink. And I think that combination works really well. One thing to note though, if you are using acrylic inks directly on the paper and then want to layer it perhaps with another medium, just be mindful it will create a bit of a slightly water resistant surface so it might do some strange things to your layers. I do recall trying to do a wet and wet technique on top of this using the black Indian ink and it wasn't quite taking how I wanted it to, however applying the Indian ink neatly was absolutely fine. Also worth bearing in mind is the Indian ink has a very matte finish to it whereas the acrylic ink has a slight sheen to it, it depends how thick your layers are. Now obviously it's time for some highlights and I used this very odd China Graph pencil. Now I can appreciate the trying something new thing here, it's not very often I will use a white pencil for highlights on a painted piece, I will use the gel pen or I'll probably use gouache, something like that. The pencil, it did a job but it, it took a lot of work, I think it's because it's designed for non-porous surfaces and even though the acrylic ink had created the seal it wasn't quite the right texture beneath it and, and I found it hard, a little bit cumbersome. I had to press on to try and get some sort of yield of colour from it and in doing so because it's quite a brittle lead inside I found that it just kept snapping and it was really impossible to sharpen as well. I tried a variety of pencil sharpeners to try and get a decent point on it and it, it just wouldn't let me do it at all so I, I just hit a stage where I kind of gave up. However, it was nice to try it out and I shall keep it because at some point I'm sure there will be a non-porous surface I will try it out on and I will share that with you. But it's not my favourite material out of the box either. Now for this final piece you see on screen before you, I thought I would try a different colour scheme. I didn't want to add in any definite lines so I haven't used the pen for any line work on here. I literally just used the pencil, lightly sketched it out and went straight in there with the paint. I tried to be quite loose as well and just creating very very subtle textures in the background using the yellow and the red and it's a very limited palette here. It is just the yellow, the red and I just use a touch of that purple just to add a little bit of tone in some areas. I must admit I am actually quite impressed with acrylic inks and probably using them properly and I quite like the unusual consistency to it compared to watercolour or other water-based inks that I've used. You can create some very flat areas with it and if you use it neatly and just build them layers up completely obscuring the paper beneath it, it's marvellous. But if you do very light layers, especially with the yellow, even though it has a slight opacity to it, the colour beneath, if it's darker than it, will still come through and you can create some really nice tones with that. I really like how I've been able to add some golden shimmers to the character's hair and it just adds a little bit of texture without it having to involve really obvious lines and really obvious definition. I must admit, and this is on my part, I found it really hard working out the ratios with these inks. I could not get a skin tone for ages that I was happy with before painting on here. I was using quite a lot of yellow and adding such small amounts of red in there and it would seem like nothing's happening and then all of a sudden it was like, oh, I've added too much and that's something I'm going to have to learn when I use these a little bit more, but that's okay, it's all part of the fun. I suppose really I should get to my point on what I think of this box. So it's going to be for sale until February, it's not necessarily a mystery art box as such, it's just coordinated and put together and it's all very nice. 
Would I buy it again? It very much depends on what is in the box. I'm going to be really honest with you there. My first experience was not a great one. I didn't feel like I was getting much value for money. This time round, I do feel like I've got more value for money. I feel like the magazine as well actually offers more than a bunch of adverts for other lines that the company do. And actually, it's quite a nice magazine to sit down with. There's some nice handy hints in there and it's just a nice read. Get a cup of tea on, sit and read me Artful magazine. I was quite happy with that. I really don't believe for one second though that it's worth £90 worth of art supplies. I definitely think it's worth £35. I'm sorry Artful. You did try though and it's a lot better and you've got my attention for the next box perhaps. What do you guys think of this quarter's Artful box? I'd like to know if you've seen the first video I did. I was a bit mean about it but I, you know, it was a lot of money to spend and it's all explained in that video. This one though, I'm kind of more pleased with, but uh, as always, I would like to hear what you guys think. I personally think this isn't a bad introduction to these supplies. There's one or two odd ducks in there, but that's okay, that's okay. Maybe swap out the white pencil for a white gel pen or a Posca pen. But again, maybe I'm just nitpicking and I'm being very narrow-minded about things. Anyway, here are the creations I have made from the December to February Artful Box. I do hope you have enjoyed this video. I would like to say thank you to you lovely lot for watching, especially if you've made it all the way to the end of the video. If you are new here, please hit that subscribe button and there should be a couple more on screen to watch right now. In the meantime, I'll see you on the next video. Bye!